Hello and welcome to the Pod Awakens presents Chronological Clone Wars. My name is Jordan. With me, as always, is Logan. How are you today, Logan? I'm doing well. Um, it's a it's a rainy day here in Orlando, um, which always reminds me Same. of the day that what? Did Same. You Same. Oh, yeah. Raining here too. I just feel like everywhere around the country right now. We're recording this on January seventh. Um, for those that are um, we're in a time warp here, um, but it's a uh, it's nasty weather all around, Jordan. I don't know what's going on. January has just not been very friendly down here. Um, it's usually pretty cool out, but it's usually pretty sunny during January, so it's kind of a bummer in Florida. But you, you were going to say something. You were going to say it reminded you of what? Oh, um, it reminds me of. Uh, gosh, I'm going to forget it again. Help me. What's the planet called? Camino. <laughs> Thank you. I said this last episode, maybe. Yes. The episode before that. But it's just been like Camino all day, every day lately. It's been kind of depressing. It's like real winter. Like we're, we get winter except the snow. Like we don't get snow. You guys get that. But yeah, we had some yeah. flurries yesterday. Oh, that sounds fun. That's, yeah, that sounds fun. But no, I'm good. It's just, I was looking out my window and it was currently sprinkling still and it makes me sad. I don't know how Camino just turn the sprinkler off. <laughs> I think that's how that works. <laughs> um, yes, we're talking two episodes of season one, and then next week we finish up season one, except for the uh, the finale, which is somewhere when we're watching season three. So I know last week I said we're finishing season one. That's what I meant. Like we're like majority out of uh, of season one. Uh, after this and next week. Uh, so we're talking Blue Shadow Virus. Cool name. Uh, this is directed by Giancarlo Volpe and written by Craig uh, Tidally. <clears throat> and it was premiered February 13th, 2009 on, I almost said the CW, on the Cartoon Network. I don't know why I would have said the CW. Oh, the CW, man. Yeah, well, it was very different back then. Uh, the Disney Plus description, Padme and Jar Jar search for a secret separatist bioweapons lab. Because who do you want around bioweapons other than Jar Jar? It, that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of, yeah. No, that's great. I think there should be shirts that say that. Who do you want by your bio? No. Uh, yeah, so that was a uh, great decision. So it's a Padme Jar Jar and 3PO episode, which is a a, a, th a threesome that is particularly getting a lot of play in these early episodes, I feel like. Uh, we had quite a few episodes that are these three. Maybe I'm wrong. I know for sure we definitely had the, uh, the one a few weeks ago, Gun Bombad Jedi. Oh, Bombad, that's what it was. Yeah. It wasn't going to jail. Was it? No, yeah, that the... one was, I think, mostly just Jar Jar. Was it? I, I, Jar Jar and, and Padme are always together, though, because that's kind of what he was. Is he technically like her bodyguard at some point? He's a senator of Naboo. Uh, that makes sense. And she is one as well. I think he just represents. Oh, no, he's a representative, not a senator. Sorry. So yeah. I think he is the representative for the Gungans, and he talks to uh, the senator as a representative. That's right. Um, I think he's a senator later. Um, so Padme asks for Obi-Wan and Anakin to assist with this. So they'll meet up with them pretty much like next episode. Uh, but uh, apparently she mentions relations with the Gungans are stressed at this point. Like uh, Mace Windu and, and uh, Yoda are talking to her about like, hey, what? we're going to send some Jedi with you. Uh, and she mentions, well, since the since the relations with the Gungans are stressed right now, they like Obi Wan, so I want Obi Wan and Anakin. Really, I think this is her play to just make sure Anakin's on this mission so she can see him. But I don't know, because like I don't know why the Gungans would love Obi Wan that much. Uh, she said like he they see him as one of them, but like Obi Wan. Yes, he was in episode one and met with the Gungans there, but he was like 
he wasn't like Qui Gon. Qui Gon was like really good with talking to the Gungans. I was kind of mm-hmm. curious on why they love Obi Wan. So I guess it's just the history. Like, hey, you guys saved us ten years ago. We trust you. We'll we'll take him. But I just thought the way that she phrased it was was pretty interesting. Yeah, you need the quiet. You need Liam Neeson. That's what you need. It has nothing to do with it. It's Ewan McGregor. They don't like. I don't know why. <laughs> Although this wouldn't have been Ewan. <laughs> sort of it. I don't know the guy that voices Obi Wan. James Arnold uh, Taylor. But okay. they said they do like him. Yeah, well, not as much as Qui Gon. Qui Gon's cooler. <laughs> my opinion. Not really. I, I mean, Obi Wan's my favorite. But Obi Wan yeah, I... was. Yeah. I don't know why I said that. Uh, let's see. Blue Shadow Virus. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up. This on, I guess the wiki, uh, the Wikipedia here, and see if there's any content, on, like context on what type of issue they would have with the Gungans right now for for Naboo. Maybe the. So also, this is supposed to be a, a virus that is thousands of years old that has gone by the wayside here. Um, until this doctor, Dr. Vindy, is going to research it um, for Jedi-proof biological weapons. That way it would take out the Jedi as well, and they don't have to worry about you know, going in hand-to-hand combat with a, with a Jedi. He's going to create several bombs for it, too. Um, but yeah, no, I, I don't see... I can't find it. I wish I could just look up like Naboo relations. <laughs> like, uh, where was like what was going on with with this? You might so, want to just type in Naboo.gov. Yes, yeah, yeah. See what their <laughs> article see what is. Uh, yeah. see, see all the articles about the, right. uh, see the what they're voting for and what the issue was. I'm sure there's a YouTube video out there that explains the whole. Watch the C-SPAN yeah. where they're like in. Yeah, they're yeah. a lot of filibuster about. Yeah, while well, they're filibustering water. it, the yeah. Gungans are very upset about something. Yeah, but I I took it as almost just her being like, "Hey, this is the way I'm going to get Anakin on this mission." But I mean, maybe the Naboo people see them as too cunning. Maybe that's why they don't have the best of relation because Qui Gon's pretty cunning, like deceptive in a way. Like, what what I no what I understood like, well I guess you're right it could be read like that the way I was reading it was the Gungans weren't having great relations with the Naboo like the regular people yeah, the, maybe. Uh, the way she said it was like relations with the Gungans are stressed so she wanted someone that would I don't know but you're right maybe it was maybe the Gungans weren't very happy with the Jedi. Yeah, and the Jedi have a good relationship with the people of Naboo. Cause Padme. Yeah. Because so, Padme has great relationships. Yeah, really great Jedi. relationships. Yeah. Uh, so then we, we see the sad scene where all these Naboo creatures are starting to die from just drinking water uh, as the blue shadow virus is being recreated by Dr. Vindy. Now, they have a bo- he has a few bombs and are going to collect the bomb and arrest... Dr. Vindy, but when uh, the episode starts, the second episode starts, they pretty much have the bomb and they look and they're like, oh, it's actually missing the virus part. And the, you find out the droid, the weird little bunny droid, had taken the uh, the virus. Um, these two didn't really feel like two separate episodes at all. They, they really flew into each other more than I think any of the other ones have. Because it picks right off with that. It's like, actually, the thing that we just wrapped up the episode with of we deactivated the bomb was kind of a lie. And the bomb is deactivated, but now the virus is gone. And uh, so then it kind of goes into Mystery of a Thousand Moons here, which let me read this synopsis for everyone. Anakin and Obi-Wan must find the antidote for a deadly virus. So this episode... Uh, even though the lab is shut down, he still activates, uh, Dr. Vindy activates the blue shadow virus and it infects Ahsoka, Padme, and many clone troopers. And it's fatal within 48 hours. Here's my problem with it. I'm guessing because he made it smoke instead of the 
in the water why it would take longer because like the 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 naboo creatures died like within seconds of drinking this water but i guess because it's airborne in this case they have 48 hours i don't know it just seemed kind of odd that it's like not as deadly right now um so they have to travel anakin and obi-wan travel to the planet uh iago uh, to secure the only known antidote to the sickness. When they arrive there, though, there's this whole bunch of people that are living in fear of what they call like a ghost, uh, a creature that they are scared of. I think they call him something like Droll. And um, one thing that I thought was really great with this, they run into a kid. Here and the kid's name is uh, Jabo Hood, and he has rewired all of these droids to be like his servants, and uh, just really like a good example of how Anakin was when he was uh, a kid. Yeah, he's a, Anakin sees a lot of himself, I think, in Jabo. Like, um, my favorite is when he jumps off the ship and he kills all the droids and, and Obi-Wan goes, nice job, Anakin. You jumped off and killed 17 defensive droids. And then the one drops and he goes, 18. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but it, it is such a Anakin thing. Like, go ahead, jump out and start killing everything before you actually think rationally about what you're doing. Um, yeah. But I did like this Jabo character though. He's kind of like, I don't know. He kind of felt out of Star Wars-y, though. Like, it felt very, like, Lord of the Flies-ish or, like, I don't know. He, he felt like he was just, like, this punk rebel kid that got away and just did things on his own however he wanted to do them. Yeah, I guess. You could say that's very Star Wars, though. Punk rebel kid who does his own. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess. He felt like a very young Han Solo that was also technically yeah, yeah. capable. That's true. You know. of Oh, wow. You call him Han not people. capable, huh? I meant, like, capable of technology. That's what I meant. Oh, technically. Okay. oh, so, like, yeah, like, Han's gotten too old. He doesn't know how to turn on, like, the Roku. Yeah, he's calling his kid. He's like, Ben, <laughs> how do I turn on the Blu-ray player? <laughs> yeah, you have to Everything's press HDMI dad, input. Know. You have to press the yeah. input button. I'm oh. so angry. These darn machines. Yeah. yeah, that's how Han was when he... That's why Kylo actually killed him. He was yeah, like taken out of the misery. That's why Han was like, "Yeah, I know what you got to do, yeah. right? Like, uh, I can't even find the remote anymore. Yeah, take him out. I blame the Wookie." <laughs> uh, so yes, while uh, so, so that happens, they have to go. They they get the antidote, but to get off of here now, they have to solve the mystery of okay, how do we get off of this planet now? This droll thing is almost like a primitive Death Star it kind of looked like, uh -huh. right? It was like this yeah. like it looked like the dish from the Death Star. Yeah. But it did this 100%. weird like thing where it's like reflecting off all this stuff and it's like this web of like electricity. Mm -hmm. But they're going to defeat it and be able to get out of there and they get there just in time pretty much to save the day here um so i mean look this one didn't have too much to really dive into i don't think this was a very like by the book arc these two episodes i don't know what was your thoughts i felt like i couldn't dive in deep like this as i could like the last three episodes we just did. yeah yeah I, I struggled with these two um i don't know like it felt like it was i felt like we were in the same place over and over and over again and it just kept they kept doing the same thing it was like get the vial okay get didn't get it get the vial figure out where the other vials are figure out where the bombs are figure this out figure that out now, like, now I'll get the antidote because we're right screwed. yeah and then, yeah I, it, yeah it just didn't have like a, a good flow um i don't know i it, it did feel strange and now this the the next one's better i think but um yeah this one didn't really have this didn't have the, the thing for me, but it is it is strange now that we're in post COVID times, um, as far as like pre, it was post pandemic times, and we always deal with virus like things. And I don't know, yeah. they hit a different chord now. <laughs> That's true. That's deeper. true. 
as like people are coughing and I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah, it's like, did you ever used to play the game Pandemic? Uh, yes. I think it was called like yep. at one school at school or yep. there. we used to play it at school. Yep. And you're like create a virus and try to make it spread. And then yes. You, yeah, that game lost all fun in <laughs> 2020. We were reliving that. Reliving that. Yeah. We were like, I don't think I could ever touch that game again. Yeah. I, think like, I haven't played that. it since high school, but like, geez, I don't think I could ever do that again. It's on the iPhone now. You can actually buy it, I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah. There's like pandemic games. I've been doing a lot of like, those are the type of games I like. I like a lot of simulator type stuff. So, Me too. Yeah. Um, so I was doing, you know, in school and stuff, you'd be like, oh, yeah, that the, the holdout was always Madagascar. Yes. I had trouble always getting the virus to spread there. Yep. But then, yeah, I mean, nowadays you're like, oh, yeah, that's not a great game to play. No. I'm sure, like, some can still play it. I'm sure some people are like, well, look, especially now as things are looking a little better mm -hmm. four years out, right, uh, that, you know, people might be able to, kind of get back to that again but there are some um you know not to get off on a tangent here but like uh falcon the winter soldier apparently there was a whole deleted plot of yeah. them trying to spread a virus that then they were filming while covid was going on and they cut that because they're like this is not gonna play well yeah. when we put this out like it's just not gonna play well another weird one and this is totally off topic like too but um my wife um, and now myself, like I'll watch Grey's Anatomy, and the episode before they before March, it was like March tenth or thirteenth or something. Yeah, like that. right around then. The one that was supposed to come out today was about a virus that would that spread, and they had to quarantine people. So they showed wow. it after the pandemic. Like they showed it, I think it was, and it like had all sorts of like you know the text before, like yeah, telling yeah. you like, hey, you know, just so you know, this was shot way before, and we had nothing to really, but you know, like I, I think. I mean, it, it's a common thing. Like, there's always been a plague, and this is—it's pretty similar to that. It's all, every hundred years, there's some kind of illness that goes around that. that yeah, Spanish flu in yeah. 1918 or whatever it was, right? It was right. very 1908, something yeah, like that. Black plague, and I think there's been one every century now, um, almost yeah. a year. So, hopefully, that's the last one for, for this so. century. <laughs> yeah, we won't be around to figure. Well, maybe we will, but. Uh, We'll yeah, I'm gonna get cryogenically that. frozen. So okay, yeah, uh, I'll yeah. Same. <laughs> just we'll just head, you doing the podcast once we get unfrozen. <laughs> They're gonna be like, "Wow, that was wild." We get to see all the Star Wars content that came out afterwards. And be like, <laughs> all right, let's binge it. Let's go. Snow back. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, these episodes, these two were a struggle for me. The, the most exciting part was when they were going to get the antidote and they're on the whole other planet yeah and they Rebo. like i felt like that part was the best same yep 100 percent. i thought it was i don't know i just didn't i didn't care much for the the other plot but again maybe it's because the gungans get involved and, and i just lose interest but i don't think it's that because i i mean i i like jar jar and these episodes were just not great plus it doesn't help that jar jar is still being voiced by not his main uh you know, actor. So yeah. again, it just, for me, it always, I was like, can we just have Jar Jar stop talking? Cause it doesn't sound right. right. And then Logan's like, can we just have Jar Jar stop talking? Yeah. <laughs> we just have Jar Jar stop existing. <laughs> 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 That's what Logan hopes. But, um, but you know, I mean like virus stuff, I feel like not even, but even before COVID, it just kind of feels like it's the, it's the, I don't know. The it's, thing safe. That, it, it's the one that everybody does. Like, I feel like there's an episode of this of every show. Yeah. It's a hundred percent safe. Cause people are like, it could happen. Well, yeah, it did happen. Now what? <laughs> I'll tell you what a good show is a good show that I watched a year before COVID. All right. Is uh, 12 monkeys, which is a uh, show about a virus that kills uh, a bunch of people. But then uh, in the future, these people go back in time to try to stop, the virus from existing and then it gets all timey wimey stuff so uh time travel is my favorite so I, I like that but i watched it like i finished it i think right before i went to your wedding oh really yeah that's fun 
or it was like I had just a few episodes left and came back yeah. and finished it or something. But it was like that summer is when I was binging it. Gotcha. Good times. All right. So next week, uh, I know this is a short episode. People are like, yeah, yeah okay, whatever. It's only 20 minutes. Um, we summed up 40 minutes worth in, in 20 minutes for you, so you don't have to. Oh, the Padme almost does say I love you, though, when she's about to die. That was interesting. I was like, and Obi-Wan was there. I was like, how 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 oblivious are these Jedi people, man? Like, well, they, there's know actually... all, they don't know that, that Anakin's in love. Like, there, There's a deleted scene, I believe it is, of Revenge of the Sith, where he goes to visit Padme, and he pretty much says like he's always known always yeah yeah he pulls a snape he does <laughs> so uh yeah it's not something they're able to keep under wraps so you know what it's like have you ever had those friends yes that i know where you're going with this. you know are into each other and, you're and just they like, might be that? doing something they you, you think they might know and they might be doing something but they like playing chess ha- yeah but they haven't told you they're playing chess. Then, then they're playing chess. But it's obvious. Yes. You know, it's like okay, we're just not acknowledging it, and then I don't acknowledge it because I'm, like, I'm not going to acknowledge it until somebody says something. Yeah. And they're so flirty, like when they're together. Yeah. Like, come on, like, are you stupid? And and it's oftentimes like you're you're in a relationship, and you and your spouse are going mm-hmm. or or partner are going. We know. And they don't right. know. Like, come on. Like, they're more in love with than, than we are. Like, <laughs> come on. Come off of it. <laughs> yes. So I think it is obvious to a lot of people, but I think they're kind of in a hard spot here, the Jedi. Again, yeah. of being like, Well, he's supposed to be the savior, right? Like, what do, <laughs> yeah. we, what do we do? Do we tell him he can't you know, like can't be with this relations lady? With that woman? <laughs> And then it's like, did you see what he did to the Tuscan Raiders? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not, <laughs> not going to tell. Uh, yeah, so I mean, they're, there's they're in a little bit of a rock and a hard place there for the uh, the Jedi. I, I don't know if like I think Yoda probably knows, right? Because I mean, he goes to Yoda when he's having dreams in Episode Three. I don't know. I feel like Yoda would know, but they all know. I don't know if Mace knows, actually. Yeah, Mace but he might. Might be why he doesn't trust him. I don't him. know. Mace is pretty dumb. Did you see the way he died? Come on. <laughs> yeah, he was like, well, you know, to be fair, Anakin should have listened to him. Yeah, Anakin really set him up for failure there. Uh, next week, we have a Ryloth arc. This is a three-episode arc taking place on Ryloth, which is the home world of the Twi'leks. Um, so we will see Cham Syndulla again. So this is the planet that they were on when, uh, what episode was that? I guess it was an older episode, like a later episode, but one we did later. Oh yeah. It was supply lines. Ryloth was under siege and, uh, that's the one where master die died. And we had like met Cham Sindula, which is Hera's father, we're going to go back to Ryloth here for these three episodes, episodes 19, 20, and 21 of season one called Storm Over Ryloth, Innocence of Ryloth, and Liberty on Ryloth. Uh, So nice three episode arc here. And then, like I said, we're going to skip Hostage Crisis. Apparently that one shows up in the time frame of season three around middle season three so then after the ryloth arc we start right at the top of season two so everybody listening along prepare yourself to watch that i'm having fun though i'm having fun revisiting these episodes um i would rank this week probably bottom right now if i had to is that where you would probably put this one or is there or is there another one that we didn't like as much? What was the one that we rated really bad? I had week seven rated really bad, which is the Dooku captured one. So it'd either oh, be yeah, that one or this that's one. The, that's the one I was talking about. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go with this one. I just, I don't know. I just didn't 
I was very like, I was watching it, and I was like, I was more into it. Probably like, there were times during the Dooku one that I was like, yeah, like I, you know, wasn't paying attention. This one I was pretty in sync with, but it was just like, this is just missing on every level for me. So I'm gonna say this one's the worst one so far. I don't know, just didn't didn't really progress anything. We don't really get much out of this besides Padme getting ready to say I love you to Anakin when she's dying with Ahsoka. Um, but yeah, no, I didn't. And I'm I'd sure. Probably, yeah. I put this one bottom. So far I have like, I wrote down these rankings just as the week. Like week six is my top one. That's the one with like Lair of Grievous. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah. Week three, which was. Jeez. Uh, that was the, the the that was clones, wasn't it? That was uh, the... clone cadets. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was a good I, one. Then I had uh, week uh, five. I forget which one that one was. Week four, and then I kind of put this one in the middle here. Be- uh, not this one. Sorry, last week's in the middle here, just for mainly that trespass episode. I uh, bumped it up to there. If it, if the first two were stronger, I would have probably put week eight up higher mm-hmm. then i have like week one week two week seven and then this one a week nine yeah week five was the rookies and then downfall of the droid duel of the droids oh okay and then what's week four one. uh week four is malevolence arc which okay I mean, yeah so this okay. Is pro- yeah so yeah so probably if the other two were definitely stronger last week it would overtake the malevolence arc but really trespass is what saved last week for me. I mean, the other ones were interesting, but it wasn't as interesting as like some of the other ones we've had so far. And then this one's bottom. Um, this one, you know, didn't really grab my attention all that much. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to the Ryloth arc. Uh, I don't really remember too much about it except for just Cham Syndulla as a whole. So I'm hoping next week is really great almost the finale so i feel like there'd be building up to some momentum there and then we jump into season two which i think is a really strong season i i think that's when we really start getting into more of the uh, the better episodes yeah so far though i mean this show I, I look forward to watching these episodes every time that we sit down to watch them like every week pretty much except for the last couple but I really do. I enjoy them thoroughly. Enjoy them, which I'm excited because I, I I just love more Star Wars content. Um, I just think they're just so well written, and there's so many because of how infinite this galaxy really is as far as Star Wars is concerned. I feel like they can go in any direction. You can get Western. You get more fantasy. You can get more yep. realistic. You can get more political. You can get more um, action packed. Like it just depends. And there's so many shows out there that if you're not a fan of this one, you're a fan of maybe. Um, the Mandalorian or you're a fan of Rogue One or you're a fan of um, episodes one through six or whatever it might be. Like, I don't know. It, it just, it, it's got a lot to satisfy its fans, even though the, there, there's a lot of times where people are not as not satisfied. satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's better than Marvel. Marvel's com- gone completely off their rails, but that's a whole different rant for <laughs> the other podcast. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. I think there's enough there to, uh, to. I don't know. I think Marvel's getting to the point of Star Wars where you can choose you what can. you want to watch and if yeah. what you like and what you don't like. So, but I've always found, but seriously, I've always found more enjoyment out of the Star Wars. Like, yeah, there's yeah. not really been yes. more. Inter- there's been, there's been ones that are not as entertaining, but they're entertaining. You know what I mean? Whereas, like, there have been Marvel movies recently that I've been like, you yeah, know, whatever. <laughs> it was yeah okay (laughs) wasn't the best but well i mean yeah it's star wars always been number one for me anyway like growing up i think because we grew up with it right like like marvel like was around but marvel hadn't gotten to this elaborate stage where it is um i think that's where people kind of lose it whereas like star wars was like they were starting this trek before you know what i mean kind of like lord of the rings had started harry potter had started well, when I, what yeah. i think uh, so there's a few things i think it helps that it was we grew up with it yeah 
but two, I, I grew up with Marvel, but the, the thing was, right, a lot of those were just adaptations. Yes. Right? Correct. So you, you see Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, and then you go and that's watch true. the X-Men, and they don't interact. They're not part of the same universe. Yep, that's true. Now, when the MCU kicked in, you know, you're much older, or I was much older at that point. Um, and it was great to finally have something like Star Wars for Marvel, where you're like, oh, all this stuff matters. Like, uh, if I watch Clone Wars, like, us watching Clone Wars. This matters to the grand universe of Star Wars. There's nothing like that still for Marvel. Um, That's true. You know, like, there's nothing in Marvel right now that you could watch, like, uh, I guess you could say what if, but really it doesn't you know they're alternate universes so it's still not like mattering to the grand mcu um and and that's what i think is great about star wars i like the universe and i like being able to see something every you know every day uh being able to be like oh this new thing that's released is important it's part of the story but it's also uh, I think this is where maybe people, you know, with, with Marvel currently is like, but I don't have to watch it if I don't want to. Mm-hmm. Like, you haven't watched Clone Wars until now. This has been out for 15 right. years. Or Bad Batch. But, right, but you were able to still understand most of general Star Wars stuff. Mm-hmm. You can just watch the movies. You can just watch the live action shows. Or you can just watch the cartoons and everything usually makes sense. So That's true. Um, they have a good balance for Star Wars, I think. I think Marvel's bridge that gap for at least our generation with adding in Toby's um, Spider-Man. Like now I feel like, cause I, I was obsessed with Toby's uh, uh-huh. Spider-Man, which now you could kind of say, okay, well look back at your childhood, how much, how much Star Wars actually came out Logan that, and I was like, well, I mean, Clone Wars, this was out when I was a kid, like growing up when I would have watched, you know, this would have been after I'd have watched Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and then Revenge of the Sith. Um, so, like, it almost equivalent, because I think what there's, are there three Spider Mans or two with Toby? Is it two, right? Three Spider Man movies with Toby. Yeah. Okay. Before, before, um, before this new one. Yep. So there's four technically then, I guess. Yeah, four that okay. he appears in now. Okay. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember. Spider-Man 1, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man 3. And then no I remember 1 and 2 because it's – what's the third? 3 one? is the one with Venom and uh, – That's right. Yep. Okay. New Goblin. I was going to say because Goblin was – Goblin was Harry after yeah. his dad in the second. You're a Goblin Harry. <laughs> You're a Goblin Harry. Car Crash. Car Crash. Oh, that's the wrong franchise. All right, uh, we'll wrap it up there. Okay, you can follow us at Pod Awakens on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of that good stuff. Any of those places, threads, whatever. Um, and like I said last week, we have a Discord that you can join too. The link is in the show notes. Have a great rest of your week. We'll catch you next time when we talk Ryloth. <laughs>